Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In today's video, I'm going to be processing the Comet C2022 E3 ZTF uh, using PixInsight. So this is the second part of a uh, two-part uh, video series that I've done on the actual Comet itself. So the first part was imaging the Comet. So if you've not seen that, then uh, click on the link above and you can watch that. Um, but I'm taking that data um, I've stacked it and then I'll explain the exact process that you need to follow in order to be able to process a comet. Uh, this being that it's slightly different from um, other deep sky objects and, and astrophotography. So uh, if you're interested in finding out more then uh, keep watching. So, uh, as I said in the introduction, um, processing of comets is different to uh, typical deep sky objects and, and videos that I've shown in the past. Um, essentially there's going to be a three stage process to this, so uh, counting the first stage as um, sort of pre-processing and stacking um, the comet images, so I took around about an hour's worth of three minute exposures, stacked all of those together. Um, and that provides one set of, uh, of data. The, the second part of that, because you'll, you'll end up with a stacked image which will have a blurred comet, so it's gonna stack and fix on, on the stars in the background. But then uh, what you actually need is uh, a nice sharp comet. So because the comet's moving through the night sky, um, it's not gonna stay in one place compared to where the stars are. So your equatorial mount is tracking the night sky, keeping those stars nice and sharp and exactly where they need to be, frame by frame. Uh, but the comet is travelling through space at a ridiculous speed and therefore it's going to move in the image. So what we then also need to do is stack the comet and then let the stars move through the image. So essentially that's what I'm going to be doing now. Uh, so uh, let's go over to PixInsight and I'll lead you through the steps. Let's start the first step of pre-processing the images, so I'll close this down now. Go up to the menu, go to script batch processing and weighted batch pre-processing. This already has um, some of my darks and biases from previous, um, previous stacking, so it's already um, pre-populated here. Um, so you, as you would do with any other stacking and calibration is you need to add uh, biases, bias frames if you need them, darks, flats and add all the VL lights which I've, I've pre-done here. In terms of in calibration just make sure that um, you've got optimized master dark and also um, yeah, you've got auto selected here so it's going to pick the right uh, files calibration files for your stacking itself. In post calibration we just want combine, combined RGB because um, it's a one shot colour image and um, then go down into output, specify the output directory um, which will be stacked in this case. I've already done it um, before but yeah you will end up with these folders. Uh, hit open then click run and it will say um, it's going to take this much disk space, make sure you've got enough disk space available and then hit continue. I'm not going to do that because it's going to overwrite my uh, files that I want to use. So uh, click continue and it will stack. Take a long time but you'll get the stacked images. So let's open that stacked image now. So go up to the file menu and to open, jump into comet, stacked and the file that we're interested in or the folder that we're interested in is master. And you've got uh, two files here, you've got the master flat, master light, um, a cropped version of that file, and an uncropped one. So we're going to take the uncropped one because we're going to do our own cropping anyway, so uh, let's take that one. There'll be these rejection frames which we can get rid of, and then we'll just auto stretch that particular image. And then the first thing that you'll find with this um, stretched image, although it's quite difficult to see anyway, um, is the stars are all in the right place and then there's this smudge um, over the period of about a, an hour or so. We've got this image, the next thing that we want to actually do, um, we'll just keep that to one side for now, is um, take the 
images that have been registered and then put those through the comment alignment tool. So if we go up to uh, processes, all processes, and you should find comment alignment here. Um, it's just worth knowing that uh, I'm on version 1.8.9-1 of PixInsight and this has very the comet alignment tool has literally just been updated as well so it's uh, worth taking a look um, at the release notes that have been provided um, so they basically provided some additional uh, support for non-linear comet paths which is which is interesting I don't know how they can be that non-linear but uh, yep it supports that now it supports the ability to be able to uh, select multiple frames um, and if the comet jumps in some way in, in your frames, then you can uh, select those and you'll see how we do that in a minute. Um, there's also some uh, optimal uh, point spread function fitting as well. Um, and you can also sort of see what the, uh, the comet path is and everything. And there's also some quite extensive documentation that's uh, worth a read if you're struggling to sleep, but actually so you understand the tool better. So uh, what we need to do is just click add files and we're going to go to our stacked folder. So we've got the stacked images here, we want the debayered um, images, so they're registered and debayered. I'm going to select all of these. So these are all the ones that have been processed whilst we've been going through the stacking process. So they've all been added in here. And then what you want to do is click, sorry, double click the file so that we can then, uh, and then need to stretch it so we can see what we're doing. And we want to um, mark that particular file in terms of, or mark where the comet position is. So you click on the, the middle of the comet, it's probably best to actually zoom in as well, just so we, we're being consistent. So right in the centre there, and then we can also uh, just go down to the end, double click on that, stretch this file as well zoom in again, making sure that we select the comet. So that's telling the comet alignment tool, here's the comet, that's what you want to track. Now we want to set the output directory. And I will set that, I'll create a new folder in here called uh, comet alignment, click create open um, so we should end up with some files that finish with the uh, postfix of underscore CA and that's all we need to do there click on global apply to then do that comment alignment so we'll just wait for this to finish and I'll speed up the video and we'll pick things up when it's done so that process is complete now. We've now aligned all of the uh, comet images. And if we go over to Finder, into our stacked folder, and that's comet alignment. And you can see all of the images here. So everything that was one of those uh, debayed images, you can see they've got the extension acd underscore ca so that's that's what we're going to be um, stacking now so back into uh, PixInsight go up to process uh, image integration and then in, in image integration we need to specify the input images so we go to add files go to our comet folder stacked comet alignment and select all of the images. Uh, so yeah, we can keep most of these um, the the defaults in this particular dialog. So combination average, etc. Um, we do need to do some pixel re rejection. So if we don't do the pixel rejection, what you'll find is you'll end up with star trails all the way through your image, um, and then you can't really then merge the stars with the comet image. So we're going to um, pick a rejection algorithm 
Let's go with Win Windsor Eyes Sigma Clipping. Um, you could probably pick either one of these Sigma Clipping ones. Um, so pick that, and then we want to just apply all, or apply global. So do that, let it do um, the stacking, which will take a bit of time again, um, and I'll come back to it once it's finished stacking. So uh, what you can see here now in the background, we can now close image integration. Uh, we've got the rejection high and low, which we can get rid of those. And we should now have a stacked comet image. Uh, there we go, comet in the middle, a big sea of green, and uh, yeah, that's what we're after. So we can close this image, this image, um, and what we'll do now, just to keep things uh, nice and tidy, will be uh, to rename this Comet Stars and rename this Comet. So these two images are now um, ready for kind of standard processing. So what we're going to do is uh, crop the images, do some dynamic background extraction, color calibration. Um, star extraction, uh, stretch the images and then merge the two together. So what I'm going to do first is just save these. So we go to our comet folder, save them as EXIF files. And then a separate folder here. So this is an image purely of the comet. Save that as 32-bit image, and save the stars as well, same folder, and we're going to call this um, Comet Stars, save that as well, and then we're, we're, we're good to go. So we're now into the uh, final stage, which is the uh, post-processing of the comet and the background. Our uh, first step is to uh, do a dynamic crop of these images, um, just to remove any uh, dithering that has uh, taken place in terms of um, when capturing the, the comet, um, dithering to move around uh, the, the night sky slightly uh, to avoid problems like walking noise. And if you uh, if you zoom into the corner of an image, uh, you should be able to see that uh, there's, there's sort of stacking artifacts where um, the images don't all stack on top of each other because of dithering, and therefore you get more noise on the edges. So we want to just crop that out so we get uh, as much of the the benefit of stacking as possible. So uh, yeah, just so that you know, when I uh, do things like sort of creating a bigger window to uh, to work with the image. Uh, I'm pressing Command and Zero on a Mac or Control Zero on a Windows PC um, so that I can look better at the images. Um, and then if I want to make it slightly smaller, um, then that's Command T or Control T. So uh, let's start out with uh, doing dynamic crop of this image. And for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to be quite uh, aggressive in terms of uh, the cropped area. Uh, you don't need to go this aggressively, and you can um, just yeah zoom in and see where you need to make make that crop to benefit from as much of the image as you want. Um, we then want to drag this triangle onto the other image, so we perform the same crop on the background, and then just click the tick to do the crop on the main image. Press Command T again just to resize the windows, and we've done that piece. Um, the next step is um, doing some background extraction, so removing some of this uh, colouring artifacts of, of the green that you get from one shot colour um, images. You can use uh, dynamic background extraction or you can use automatic background extraction. Uh, for this particular image, I'm going to use uh, ABE just because it happens to work quite well, um, and for this exercise, it's it's relatively straightforward as well. Um, but you can use DB if you want to with your image. And I'm going to keep the box size as five. That works uh, quite nicely for this particular image, and just use uh, subtraction. And we're going to discard the background model and replace the target image. So uh, 
partly because I've done some of this already I know that it's going to work out if you're doing this on your image you might want to look at the background model to see what what it's done you wouldn't necessarily want to replace the target image although you can always just undo um, for, so this looks like um, <laughs> it's not worked but you just have to restretch again by hitting that uh, nuclear button in the in the menu do the same with the comet stars, the comet background. Restretch. And we've done our background extraction. And it's it's done a pretty good job. It looks fairly even as well. So um, yeah, it's just worth remembering that because it's automatic, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not as good as if you're doing it manually using uh, DBE. Um, I tend to have my icons in a bit of an order in terms of processing. Uh, I have tried linear fit and for some reason it doesn't really work too well with this particular image so I'm not going to use that. I don't need channel combination because I'm uh, using a one-shot color camera. Um, SCNR, uh, I'm not going to use that for this particular um, image because um, normally it's to remove a particular color from the image and um, typically you might want to remove green from your images. Um, because space tends not to be very green anyway. Uh, however, this comet is green and it's meant to be green, so I'm not going to be removing any green from the image. So we're uh, going to stick with that there. Could still do it with the background, um, but uh, yeah, in this instance, I'm not going to. The next step that's important to do at this stage is uh, color calibration. So, what we need to do for this is just take a couple of previews um, within the background stars themselves um, so that we can take a measurement of what the background actually looks like so to get that background uh, as neutral as possible and then the same with the stars so you got the good correct color balance so to create a preview press option and N or alt and N on a Windows machine and then just drag the rectangle over an area of the sky that you know is is Kind of, or you can see is as dark and as neutral as possible. Try and avoid stars as well for that particular preview. And then we're going to pick a, another area of the, of the image where it looks like we've got a neutral looking star. Uh, so we'll pick this one here. That looks fairly neutral. Then we'll open up color calibration. So all of these items that I'm using down here on the right hand side are all available processes within within here. So if you if you know where it is, it'd be under color calibration and color calibration. If you don't know the sub menu, then you can go to all processes and just find it in the list of all of the processes. So we've got a white reference and a background reference. So the background reference was the first preview, so clicking on that view icon, selecting the view and clicking OK, and then doing the same with the white reference, selecting the uh, preview 2, clicking OK. We can then drag that into this image to get the uh, correct colour calibration for that image. And then we can also do the same with the comet itself as well just using that same reference let's just remove these previews we don't need these anymore just right click on the preview and hit delete so the next step uh, for this particular image I'm going to be doing uh, I'm going to stretch it and then after that I'm going to do noise reduction so down into scripts easy processing suite and soft stretch uh, so again I tend to just use some of these tools sometimes just because they're nice and quick Sometimes I might go through the more um, lengthier process of using uh, the, the screen transfer func function to stretch the images and things like that. So uh, just keep all the defaults, run easy soft stretch, and then do exactly the same with the comet background as well. So there we go, we now have two stretched images and now we're going to use a noise exterminator on both of these images just to denoise them uh, again you've got a number of options open to you you can use um, uh, 
the Easy Processing Suite has its own uh, denoise capability in there and that does actually work really well. Um, it does take quite some time but it works well. Um, just for the interest of speed I'm just going to use Noise Exterminator um, but it also does a very good job. So if I just zoom into the comet here, this is after and this is before and you should be able to see quite a difference in terms of the noise reduction. So uh, yeah, that's one reason why I use that particular tool suite. Uh, as I said, there are other options as well. You can use multi-scale linear transform uh, with these settings uh, to re remove the luminance noise and also you've got uh, chrominance noise reduction where you could use these settings as well. Um, so one to screen grab if you want to give that a try and that works quite well as well. So we are on to the final stage here now. Just I think really just some sort of curve adjustments for this particular image. Uh, I've got the comet selected. Uh, click the circle to open the preview. We can just play about with adding sort of S curves to try and pull out a bit more detail in the in the comet and the tail. Um, it's obviously quite a difficult thing to try and do here because what we don't want to do is lose that that detail in the comet and the nice uh, gradients of colour that you get from the, the core of the comet radiating outwards. So if you if you do it too much um, kind of pull that too much you can see that you blow out the core of the comet and it doesn't really look very good at all. So just trying to get as much detail as possible without sacrificing the, the detail in the comet itself. What I'm also just trying to do here as well is just to darken the background so that um, any of those um, trailing stars that are still kicking around uh, are, are removed. I'm going to just also boost the saturation of the comet a bit just to get some more of that green coming out. Let's just have a quick play about with, with just the green channel. I'm not convinced that's working particularly well. But you can also just switch between the preview circle in the preview window to turn things on and off. I don't like that green adjustment at all. So I'm just going to cancel that. Uh, this one, this this curves here. I forgot to say that I was actually playing about with is the is the luminance or the lightness of the image. You can also use the RGB uh, curves adjustment to do something similar. They're not identical, but it's worth playing about with both of these two things to see if you can get the result that you're looking for. So if I just switch between, so this is before and that's after. I've got more detail coming out in the in the tail of the comet. Um, haven't managed to get this the, the 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 big sort of what was it ion tail that uh, some of the images capture. I'm not sure whether that's down to the data that I captured itself or uh, it doesn't seem to be there. So um, yeah, I'm not sure quite why that is though. So let's stick with that. Apply that by hitting the square on the curves adjustment tool and then we'll just reset that curves and then we'll do something similar to the to the background so what we actually need to do with this background first is is we want to actually extract these stars and we don't want this comet smudge so we can do that using um, or I use star exterminator uh, there are a number of other tools again that you can use within Pix Insight to, uh, to extract the stars from an image. It could be the Starnet++ tool or star masks and things like that. Um, not covering those in those videos, but uh, yeah, I tend to like Star Exterminator again because it's a nice, nice and quick tool and it works on my Mac, which was a, an M1 processor-based Mac. And yeah, the Starnet tools uh, didn't, didn't used to work. I think they do work now, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I've got the tool, so I'm just going to use Star Exterminator. I'll just speed things up uh, because this takes a little bit of time to do, and then we'll finish off with just processing the stars. So we now have the uh, stars extracted in the Comet Stars Stars. Um, great name for a, a, a file. 
uh, we can just minimize this now you can just see that that's just the comet smudge and no stars in it anymore so that's yeah we don't need that so what we want to do is just just boost the saturation in some of these stars get some get some of the color out of them and let's open curves transformation open the preview so we can see what's going on in the preview and just boost the saturation so uh, just hit the square to boost the saturation in the stars let's do it a couple of times I think that that should bring out the colors without being too too crazy and then the final step is just using a bit of pixel math to combine these two images together so we've got the comet stars stars add that to the integration which is actually the comet what I should have done is actually just renamed these tabs and then you can actually see within pixel math exactly what you're working with but uh, yeah just you can double click on integration and give it a new identifier if you wanted to do that and then drag the triangle onto the image to create that merge and then we have the resulting image so I'll just make this a bit bigger and you can see how we've processed the comet boosted the saturation in the stars a bit and yeah denoised the image so that concludes this video I hope you found it useful if you did hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so thank you very much for watching and clear skies